Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you run a Hackintosh, you already know OpenCore is the best bootloader out there. And great news, Aussie Danthera just released version 1.0.6 on November 3rd, 2025. This is a super stable maintenance update packed with smart fixes. Today, I'll walk you through every single change, who should update, and exactly how to do it without breaking your system. Let's jump in. First, quick recap for newcomers. OpenCore is an open-source UEFI bootloader that lets you run real Mac OS on normal PC hardware. It's way more modern and secure than the old Clover bootloader. It supports FileVault, system integrity protection, and all the latest Mac OS features right out of the box. Best of all, everything happens in memory, so your drive stays clean. If you're new, the Dortania OpenCore install guide is still the number one resource. It already supports 1.0.6 with almost zero config changes. Okay, let's look at the official release. Now here's everything new in 1.0.6. I'll go one by one so it's easy to follow. Number one, added a workaround for undetected CPU frequency in the provide current CPU info quirk. Big thanks to contributor HG13BS. This fixes power management glitches on certain CPUs when that quirk is enabled. Number two, updated provide current CPU info to properly report CPU ID leaf zero cache sizes on Mac OS 10.5 and 10.6. Yes, that means better support for Leopard and Snow Leopard builds, perfect for retro fans. Number three, fixed Linux EFI stub loading when using Duet. This bug existed since version 8.8.8. .8. If you dual boot Linux on an old BIOS machine, you'll finally stop seeing errors. Number four, the QEMU build script now supports pure EFI mode without needing Duet. That makes testing open core in virtual machines much cleaner. Number five, increase the safe path limit to 192 characters. No more path too long errors with deep folder structures or long file names. And a few smaller tweaks, better 32-bit tool builds for Mac OS 10.6 and earlier, plus general cleanup. Compared to 1.0.5, this is mostly bug fixes and polish. It works perfectly with macOS Sequoia 15.x and even the latest Tahoe 16 betas. Pair it with the newest Kexts, Lilu, whatever green, Apple ALC, and you're golden. So who should update right now? Definitely update if you run macOS 10.5 or 10.6, you use the provide current CPU info quirk, you dual boot Linux on legacy BIOS hardware, or you ever hit path length errors. If your 1.0.5 setup is rock solid, you can wait, but honestly, why not grab the free stability boost? Now, how to update safely, step by step. We will use OpenCore Auxiliary Tool, or OCAT for short. Step one, mount your EFI partition and open the config.plist. Step two, back up your entire EFI folder. Seriously, do it. Click this button to have the backup EFI straight into your desktop. Step three, let's update the binary from OCAT by clicking this button and fetching the latest open core binary files. Step four, update the kexts as well. Apple ALC was updated recently. Let's check if some other kexts are updated too. Step five, sync the bootloader and kexts by clicking this button. Step six, save and run OC validate to double check everything is clean. Step seven, boot and enjoy. Pro tip, Test the new EFI on a USB stick first. That way, your main drive stays safe. If you get stuck in verbose mode, throw a dash V boot flag and check the locks. That's it. OpenCore 1.0.6 keeps Hackintoshing fast, secure, and future-proof in 2025. If this video helped, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell for more guides. Drop your CPU and macOS version in the comments. I read them all. All links are in the description. Official download, Dortania guide, and full changelog.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.